Hello, child of God. This week there was an unprecedented prophetic event, an important prophetic milestone. On October the 1st, 2013, at a meeting of the United Nations, which represents all the people of this world, a Bible prophecy was declared fulfilled by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel. The main points of his speech were concerning Israel's pending attack on Iran's nuclear weapons programs and the Palestinian peace talks. But he concluded the speech by quoting the prophet Amos. Are being realized. As the prophet Amos said, they shall rebuild ruined cities and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and drink their wine. They shall till gardens and eat their fruit. And I will plant them upon their soil, never to be uprooted again. Veshavti etshvut ami Yisrael. ובנו ערים נשמות וישבו, ונטו קרמים ושתו את יינם, ועשו גינות ואכלו את פריים, ונטתים על אדמתם, ולא ינטשו עוד. Ladies and gentlemen, the people of Israel have come home never to be uprooted again. Some of you may be thinking, well, whoop-de-doo, quoting the prophet, that's no big deal. Secular Israel just acknowledged to the entire world and gave credit to Almighty God. First, for restoring Israel as a nation. Second, the returning of the Jewish exiles. And third, that Israel will never again be uprooted. This is a summary of many prophecies that we have seen fulfilled in our own generation. To emphasize the significance of this important event, consider another prophetic milestone. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all, nor do you understand that it is better for you that one man should die for the people, not that the whole nation should perish. He did not say this of his own accord. But being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation, and not for the nation only, but also to gather into one the children of God who are scattered abroad. I'll cook it down for you. The Zionists have acknowledged that Almighty God has restored them and their nation, and that they will never be uprooted again. Almighty God will prevent Israel's destruction. Israel is the world's prophetic time clock. The next major events and prophecies will be the wars with Russia, the great worldwide earthquake, the rise of the Antichrist, more wars, a meteor storm, and the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, the true Messiah, to save Israel from its enemies. The world will soon know that Almighty God defends Israel, and Israel will soon know the true Messiah. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. I'd like to point out to you, child of God, that these prophecies have been fulfilled in our hearing. Almighty God is not fulfilling his words by the prophets just to entertain us. Listen to what the Prime Minister of Israel said about Israel attacking Iran's nuclear power program. When it comes to Iran's nuclear weapons program, here's my advice. Distrust, dismantle, and verify. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Israel will never acquiesce to nuclear arms in the hands of a rogue regime that repeatedly promises to wipe us off the map. Against such a threat, Israel will have no choice but to defend itself. I want there to be no confusion on this point. Israel will not allow Iran to get nuclear weapons. If Israel is forced to stand alone, Israel will stand alone. Yet in standing alone, Israel will know that we will be defending many, many others. Both Israel and Iran have been preparing for this war for many years. They will pour out destruction on each other until Iran is subdued and the nuclear program is destroyed. But this war will exhaust Israel. This is likely to be the time when the prophecy of the Gog and Magog war is fulfilled. This war is shown to us in Ezekiel 38 and 39. Russia will see that Israel has been greatly weakened and will lead several Muslim nations in an attack on the weakened Israel. But Almighty God has established this as a trap. God will destroy all of the attacking armies with an earthquake, fire, brimstone, and so on, and save Israel. The Lord Jesus Christ warned us that when we see Zion doing these things, that his return is near. And he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they come out in leaf, you see for yourselves and know that the summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all has taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But watch yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that day come upon you suddenly like a trap. For it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the whole earth, but stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place, and to stand before the Son of Man. The instructions the Lord Jesus Christ gave us is that we should pray that we are able to stand before the Son of Man. My friend, no one is able to stand before the Son of Man unless he is washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are none righteous, no, not one. We have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Let us pray now together and ask Almighty God to forgive our sin and wash us in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just follow after me in prayer, but pray with your own faith and your own sincerity. Father God, that's right, just pray in faith after me. Father God, I ask you now to forgive all of my sins and wash me in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and make me holy unto you. Baptize me now in the Holy Spirit and give me more power to resist temptations. I acknowledge that the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for my sin and is soon to return. I forgive all of those people that I have resented or hated, and I receive from you the free gift of salvation. I dedicate my life and commit my spirit to you. I ask you now to keep me strong in the time of testing and help me to stand before the Son of Man. I receive that as done. Amen.